I have a 1994 Pontiac Trans Am. I'm gonna do a fuel pump on it. Now here's the decision you have to make. If you wanna drop the rear axle and drop the tank to get to the fuel pump, or do you wanna cut a hole 12 inches by 12 inches in your hump from here to there? It should be like right, right about this. So here's the humps inside there. And this tank is right in the middle, but you'll have to go 12 inches over. Okay. And then you have to do another 12 inches this way. All right. So we'll go from there. All right. So you want to be able to get access to plugs and everything on your lines and pull them off and you also actually need to get room in here to pull the tank unit out because once you got it unbolted the eight millimeters off of it pry it up this whole thing's going to come up and it's going to work its way this way okay if you can see it if you want to actually need all that much more room keep coming and you got a hose over here inside there you gotta pull up straight up through there and you got your sending unit and now you got your float now see how high i am i'm about two feet up now you need to bring that up over twist it like that you got your filter and then you got your float so here it is here that baby is okay pretty big piece okay it's just not your average uh fuel pump assembly okay so we're gonna leave that like that for now. I'm gonna set this off to the side. Okay. So if you decided to remove, drop the rear end, you gotta drop it pretty far. Okay. You probably gotta go, if you didn't have to do it on the ground, you gotta jack it up pretty high. Okay, so what you need to do is, you need to undo your brake line, 13 millimeter. There's a vent that goes right here. You need to take that off of there. And that goes on to the sending unit, which is that vent right here. Clips in and you got your fuel connector and your ABS connector right there. Disconnect that. Disconnect your fuel line there. Okay. And then you got another fuel line that goes down to your filter right here. And you got a clamp that bolts up right here with a 13 millimeter holds them all together. Take that off. Then you want to take off your stabilizer links, right and left side. I cut mine because they wouldn't come loose. I would say take it off here, but it's pretty rusty. So I'm afraid I was gonna snap them off. So I'll just cut them and then I'll get new ones, okay? So now my sway bar is free, all right? Then you need to remove your uh, crossbars. When it goes here, 21, 18 millimeter nut. Twenty-one bolt, eighteen millimeter nut. Also, you want to remove the top one. Also, that's a twenty-one, eighteen millimeter nut. Mine were frozen in there, so I had to use an impact chisel. You know, impact with the blunt head, impact driver, air impact. All right. So once I got the main one 
out, which is this one, then you need to work on this one. And it's got three 15 millimeter bolts on the top, but also it's got these heat shields with some uh, seven millimeter screws on them. So you want to redo, take all your seven millimeter, millimeter screws out of your heat shield above your muffler. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six screws in that one. And then this one goes off to the side over by the wheel well. And that's got one there and one there and one there. And this slides into the other heat shield. Three in that one. And you got one, two, three, four, five, six in the other one. Seven millimeters. Okay, so you need to remove that. Then you can remove this crossbar. And it bolts up there in the top right here, these three holes, okay? Then, what you need to do is loosen up your shocks right here, bring them down with some lube, and you wanna support your, your rear end, your differential, okay? Jack, put, put some tension on, jack it up, to remove your nuts on your shocks. Remove both sides. And get your shocks out of the rear end and that way you allow you to lower your rear end down and then as you're lowering it down you can grab hold of your spring take your spring out put it on the floor do the same thing to the other side take the spring out take the spring out put it on the floor okay so now you get your whole rear end loose and then you got your exhaust and it's got two hangers. All right. Hanger goes in here. And it has a 13 millimeter bolt. Well, the stud goes through there. You want to remove that 13 millimeter nut. And then this side, it's got the same thing. Got a 13 millimeter nut on a stud that goes through this little bracket right here. Like these. Right here. Looks like that. Has a 13 millimeter nut that goes on those. And remove both of those. And then you can go over here and you want to remove these two bolts, 13 millimeter, on this piece right here. Okay? And that way you can allow you to drop your exhaust down. What you basically want to do is you want your rear end to go down as far as possible. You can get it to go. Okay? And also you got, going over here, you got a hose that goes to your EVAP, your, your charcoal canister, which is up inside there. And then when you wanna, next you wanna get your tank down, you wanna remove your fuel cap, take the fuel cap off, take the two, two or three screws holding this thing in there, and remove this, take the cap off, this goes on your fuel line up by the tank. And then you got your two straps holding your tank up. And those are 15 millimeter head bolts. You can remove one at a time because you never know how much gas you have in it. Preferably you have an empty tank. Okay, because you don't want to do this with a full tank. All right. Supposedly we got this thing with this an empty tank, you sucked it all out. You know, you sucked it out through the, the fuel pump hose, you know, or got lucky and stuck a tube down through there and got it. But anyway, so now you got the two bolts for the strap loose. So what you want to do is you want a lot of straps to come down, get them out of the way. If the tank's empty, it'll stay up there and you'll have to pry it down with a pry bar, okay? So then the tank will be hanging down like this, but it's not gonna come down. It's not gonna come down all the way to hit your exhaust. So what you're gonna have to do is pry it down, pull it down over here. And then what you're doing is you're bending this tube down a little bit. 
You gotta bend it down a lot. Pull it down a lot. Go to the other side. Push the tank towards you. Pull it down. Go to the other side. Push the tank towards you. And eventually, as you keep on pulling it towards you and pulling it down, it'll eventually come out. Because what you're doing is you're bending your neck, your fill neck, okay? If your tank is real bad and rusted out, you'll crack it, all right? So you don't want to have a bad tank in there either. So if the tank is really rusty, then you might as well replace it. But you're still going to have to bend this filler tube down when you're going to get it in there. Because if it's, because it's probably bent probably four inches from from there to there, okay? That's how much you gotta bend it to get it out. Unless you wanna drop your rear end completely out of there and your exhaust completely out, then you can just come on straight down, no big deal, okay? But you still gotta get past this and you gotta work it. Bend it down, pull on, pull on, boom, pull it towards you. Go to the other side, push it towards you. This way, you know? It'll eventually come out. But like I said, you're gonna have to hang on it for a little bit to bend that filler neck, okay? So that's how you get your fuel tank out. If you wanna cut a big old hole up inside here, in between the mounts, half of it, Basically, you're removing from the black over this corner here, taking that whole piece out to get that tank unit out successfully, okay? And if you do it that way, there's always a good chance you get uh, gasoline fumes into the car. Possibility, okay? So that's how you get your fuel tank out. Hopefully I covered everything enough for you. Cause these are the bolts that were the hardest because they wouldn't come out with those torque arms that are over there on the floor. Okay. I had to use my air impact with a blunt head to vibrate them loose to get out. Okay. So that's it if you're gonna do it this way good luck if you're gonna do it this way good luck too okay at least you know where to cut it you just cut it from from here to there to at least three quarters of it okay remember 12 inches this way 12 inches that way and i'm just in between those ribs and go up 12 inches you'll be able to fill those ribs up on top and you get the carpet out okay all right hopefully i helped you out okay good luck